in Nigeria, she's known as the troublemaker. It's a nickname Ngozi Okonjo Iwela earned for taking on powerful lobby groups and clamping down on corruption when she served as finance minister. Now she's being asked to troubleshoot the world's trade watchdog. With the consensus of all 164 members, Okonjo Iwela has become the first female and African president of the World Trade Organization. That she had, uh, by a wide margin, the most preference, that she had wide support across regions and across uh, uh, levels of development, LDCs, developing countries and developed countries. They said that she had had these since the very beginning of the process. Her appointment fills a seven-month-long leadership void. The last WTO chief, Brazilian Roberto Azevedo, stepped down in August, a year before his term expired. Okonjo Evela soon emerged as the favorite to succeed him, but the US government opposed her selection. Observers say it was one of the ways the Trump administration tried to impede the organization's operations. From withdrawing from the Paris Agreement, to blocking the appointment of judges on the WTO's appellate court, to pulling out of the intermediate range nuclear forces and the open skies treaties, the US government has sought to undermine and dismantle some of the crowning achievements of multilateralism. Donald Trump's successor, US President Joe Biden, is reversing some of these policies. I'm not going to do it the way Trump did. We're going to focus on international rules of the road. On Friday, his administration stopped opposing Okonjo Iwela's appointment. And her lone competitor, South Korea's trade minister, has exited the race. The Nigerian economist is becoming the referee of global trade at a time when many countries are challenging the rule book. WTO members are at odds over whether subsidies to domestic industries should be penalized as unfair trade practices. A recent example is EU subsidies to Airbus. Okonjo Evela will need to revive the WTO's dispute resolution mechanism, which has been stalled for months since Washington stopped appointing new members. And she wants to compel developed economies to provide more support for developing economies and commit more resources towards environmentally friendly trade practices. This organization, it's all been about technical negotiation skills. If you want to continue doing the same thing you did in the past and getting the same result, fine. I think they should do something different. They need a, a different uh, uh, additional skills to be able to really uh, 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 rearrange the organization. Trade is my passion. I think it's an instrument to lift people out of poverty. As early as next week, the European Commission is expected to roll out new retaliatory measures against unfair trade practices. Some say that's encroaching on the WTO's domain, meaning Okonjo Evela will have to move quickly to revive the watchdog's relevance before its troubles compound. Mubin Nasir, TRT World. Well, for more on this, Scott Morris joins us now from Washington. He's a senior fellow at the Center for Global Development and specializes in governance issues at international institutions like the World Trade Organization. Welcome to the program, Scott. Now, we know uh, Nkosi Okonjo-Wella's appointment is a historic one. She's certainly well credentialed for the role. And you actually worked with her in your uh, former capacity as a US Treasury official. What does her appointment mean? for the World Trade Organization, and how can we expect it to change under her leadership? Well, thank you. It's good to be with you. Um, you know, I think, first of all, this is a very good day for multilateralism, and it's a good day for the WTO, uh, because we do have um, certainly Okonjo Wela's appointment, but the fact that she was appointed through a deliberate process, uh, tremendous buy-in from all the membership of the WTO, um, uh, that includes the United States and, and the new Biden administration, which signaled its very strong support for her appointment. Uh, Okonjo Wela herself is a very strong leader. She's an effective leader. Uh, she comes with, uh, frankly, I think a lot of political capital um, that, you know, that, that consensus pick uh, signals a desire to have someone uh, who will pick up this agenda at a time when, frankly, it's been broken. Um, and I, you know, I view her as uh, by no means a caretaker leader of this institution. I think she intends to 
um, work effectively with all the members um, to carry forward really this critical agenda. Indeed, one of those crucial arms of the World Trade Organization is currently broken, and that's the appellate body which serves to settle trade disputes between member countries and companies. How can we expect that to change under Okonjo Weller's leadership? We certainly know that Donald Trump effectively crippled that body by failing to appoint or, or block uh, personnel changes to the WTO. Do you expect that to change under her leadership and certainly under a Biden administration? Uh, yeah, I think both for her and for the Biden administration, what is what is very promising here is, you know, uh, a commitment to a different kind of process, namely, you know, this core multilateralism. Uh, the desire, you know, on the part of the Biden administration, there's a strong desire to be more effective in trade policy. And more effective means um, active engagement, certainly with allies, with other countries, and using the WTO as, as a core forum for that. And I think for Okanjo Uwela, it's very much the same mindset. I think she has proven her effectiveness in, in these kinds of posts in the past by by staying very actively engaged with her member countries. Um, she is a very effective diplomat. Um, I think she will play this role really uh, tremendously well. Um, and that, you know, that starts with being in close contact with, with key members like the United States, uh, trying to understand uh, where their positions are and trying to find the basis for moving forward. We know one of the main criticisms under by Donald Trump against the WTO was his allegation that uh, the organisation was biased towards China. Uh, indeed, uh, that prompted economists and other candidates vying for the top job at the WTO to echo those concerns to varying degrees. Do you think Okonjo Uwela will be able to bring China into line in, in terms of, uh, I guess, becoming more friendly and, and more adherent to world trade rules and norms? I think um, this is a tremendous challenge, um, and it's very clear that the Biden administration has its sights set on uh, a, an array of Chinese practices. But again, I think they're signaling a very different approach from the Trump administration uh, by relying on multilateral mechanisms. And I think the job for the new DG at the WTO is to be an honest broker, uh, to work effectively with all the membership, uh, to find the best approaches um, that are uh, consistent with the rules of the organization um, and, and to move that process forward. Okay, Scott Morris, we will have to leave it there, but thank you so much for sharing with us your views here on Money Talks.